Hello everybody, Drifty here from Driftwood Gaming and we got another special request on how to create a couple of states. So this is going to be a general states tutorial in RPG Maker MV. So uh, open up your database and go to states and you'll see you have a bunch of different states um, all the way down to I think 25 will be the last one and then these other ones were, will be just custom ones that I've created. But let's go to the top. Um, right at the top on the, the first slot you have your death state. Never remove this state because when your character reaches uh, 0 HP, the game is hard-coded to go directly to state 1. So keep the death state and this state 1. I mean, you can obviously uh, rename it, uh, but you definitely want to keep the death state right there where you have 0 uh, experience points and its priority is going to be 100. It will overwrite all other states. So talking about priority, what priority means is if you have two states, will they stack or will one overwrite the other. If you have priority of 100, then that state will take precedence over all other states and overwrite everything. Uh, moving on down, we have poison. And uh, how you simulate a poison is you're going to create um, uh, an, um, a, a parameter, uh, an, an extra parameter, and you want to do HP regeneration rate to a negative percent. So that means they have a negative regeneration, so it would simulate like you're taking damage every turn. So you can have like a burning effect by going uh, negative 1% and it means every turn they're going to lose 1% of their maximum HP. And that's how you would make like a, a damage over time or a dot. Um, restriction, uh, you can say that uh, whatever's right here, you can say if they're paralyzed uh, on the para paralysis one, they can't move or they can't uh, take an action um, or they can't attack. If you say attack anyone, that means they're like sort of confused. They're going to be attacking random people. If uh, attack an ally, an ally, no, berserk would be attack anyone, and then attack an ally would be confused, uh, and attack an enemy would maybe that would be berserk too. You can play around with these states and uh, make your own custom ones. Priority on uh, damage over time effects would be a, a 65. Will be will be uh, basically what you want to go for. Uh, removal conditions is like how long are they going to last. Uh, you, if you want your poison to to not persist through the battle, you can just check this box, remove at the end of battle, and then when, once the battle's over, it'll be um, like, for example, I created a burning effect. Where is it at? Here it is, burning. And it's basically like a, a really weak poison, but it doesn't last after battle. So um, it's going to take 3% of their HP every turn, um, and, but at the end of the battle, the party puts out the fire or whatever, so they remove it. But you can see the, the priority on that is also 65. Let's go down to silence. 75, it's going to seal a skill type. And you can, uh, if you have multiple types of magic, you might want to go in here and go to uh, skills and then seal all of your types of magic if you want silence to uh, stop them from using those spells. Or you can copy this and then paste it in an empty slot. Just change maximum if you need space. And then... Uh, say like uh, you can say if you have a special uh, kind of magic called uh, focus magic or something you can have a um, anti-focus or distraction as a, as a state and then silence will only stop them from casting the regular magic but uh, distraction or anti-focus will stop them from using their focus magic just some random stuff at the top uh, confusion attack anyone priority is going to be 80 on that because it's going to overwrite most most stats, you know, you want that to stick if they get confused. Sleep 85, um, it's going to, you notice that this is a higher priority. So if they're confused and then they're put to sleep, uh, the sleep will overwrite the confusion. So they won't be attacking everybody because they're asleep. So that's why the priority is higher on that. Paralysis 90, um, it's basically they can't move. They can be asleep and, par and paralyzed and it'll trigger the It'll look for the paralysis first because of a higher priority. Um, looking at the removal conditions, you can have uh, auto removal timing. So at the end of uh, at the end of the turn, or at the end of your action, the it, that's that's a uh, auto removal uh, duration and, and times. How long do you want it to last? Four to six turns. Uh, you can have it to where. Like for confusion, if they get hit, there's a 50% chance that they're going to break their confusion because they snapped out of it or whatever, and you can change these numbers. Stun, uh, it's just basically like a quick paralysis. 
It only lasts one to two turns, and it, it ends at the end of the battle. Guard, it's going to last for, for for the turn, and, and uh, by default, all of your characters have the guard ability. And what it basically does is it creates a special flag of guard, which will increase their uh, decrease the damage they take, basically increasing their their defense and magic defense. But it doesn't specifically increase their defense and magic defense. It's uh, also a hard-coded uh, special flag that uh, makes it so that they have uh, less, they have more damage reduction. Immortal, this is uh, if you use Yanfly's, uh, I think it's the battle script when. Uh, Maybe it's the, the action ones. But anyway, if you notice, when you attack, you'll see this icon pop up and then disappear. And then when someone's taking damage, you'll see it pop up and disappear. And the reason why that they trigger Immortal between uh, animations is because they don't want the, the character to die in the middle of like a, a movement, uh, in battle movement thing. So Immortal's triggered, and then it's untriggered so that they can still die, um, but not in the middle of the, the special ability. Say you have an attack, and it hits them like five or six times. You don't want them to die uh, on the third time, and you're still just your character's still spinning around attacking. So the immortal state will be in there. Priority zero because it's not going to overwrite anything. Uh, cover, it creates us another special flag of a substitute. So that means one person will take damage in front of another person to stop them from dying. Uh, provoke, basically increase, uh, increases the target rate by uh, ten times. So target rate means like your enmity or uh, aggro you know like what the what the the monster uh, what the monster wants to target more so somebody with a higher target rate they're gonna get hit more than someone with the lower target rate and I'm surprising like it doesn't seem to work exactly right but I know that there is a script if you go to um, RPG maker net or dot net uh, there's somebody and then I think Yanfly is gonna be making a provoke uh, plug-in as well that fixes it so that you can actually have a tank character that has a really high target rate and uh, and it, tanking will be a thing so you can have like your weaker casters who do a lot of damage like glass cannon style and you just have your one uh, beefy tank with a lot of HP and defense and magic defense and a high target rate and uh, he doesn't do a lot of damage but he can soak up a lot of the damage and protect your wizards hide this is going to create um, the the opposite of provoke you're going to reduce your target rate by by a factor of 10 so that you you get targeted uh, a lot less and you're you're more likely to survive you want to put this like on your your high damage rogues or high damage wizards that ha that don't have any defense hp regen um basically the opposite of poison you just go to the ex uh, extra parameter hp re regeneration is a positive number and you can change that up or down so every turn they're going to get 10% of their maximum life back uh, same thing with MP regen, except it's 5%. You can change that if you want. It's also removed at the end of battle. Um, I'm thinking about making custom ones that persist through battle, but they're removed by a certain number of walking steps. So you can cast uh, regen at the end of combat. Uh, normally, if you cast regen at the end of combat and you, you have a lot of, you've taken a lot of damage, it's a waste of a spell because you know it's going to just disappear. But uh, if you create a different HP regen that persists, um, then you can cast it at the end of the combat and then walk around and you, as you're getting your HP and MP back which is kind of cool. TP regen also known as regain in a, um, like the Final Fantasy series. Um, same thing right there every turn they're gonna get uh, their TP regeneration uh, 10. Iron body it's basically damage reduction they only take a tenth of uh, the physical damage they would normally take of course iron body doesn't affect um, like magic damage so you'll still take full magic damage. Counter attack uh, basically, when you get attacked, it'll stop the attack and it'll, it'll uh, hit them back. So, um, uh, was it uh, Josiah wanted to make a, a skill that counterattacks 50 of the time, 50 percent of the time? So, what you'd want to do, Josiah, is copy counterattack, go to a free a free slot, paste that, edit this number so instead of 100 percent, it's 50 percent. So now, 50% of the time, they're going to attack back. Now, I know what you were saying is uh, that you want them to counterattack each time, but 50% of the damage back. I'm not sure how to do that. Uh, maybe somebody else can leave that in the comments if they know how to create something like that. Um, but I know what would work similar, but not exactly the same. Uh, set their counterattack, uh, make another, uh, another uh, state, and have it uh, counterattack 50%. And then how you would award this state is you would create a skill that that uh, applies that. So I'll do that now to cover the the special request. So we'll have this um, 
we'll call it um, semi counter attack state and uh, we'll go to skills and we're gonna create a new skill and we're gonna call it uh, you can call it the same thing if you want or create a different name for it semi counter we'll just go semi counter create an ability and give it a title description counter attacks 50% of the time um, give it whatever TP cost you want to have any MP cost you want it to have just uh, decide what kind of skill or special or magic or whatever you want it to have you probably want to put uh, if you if it's gonna be a skill that you award your characters you probably want to set this to an ally or even all allies uh, and the occasion you you probably want to have it battle screen only and then what you'll do is go to effects and in here edit that go to state add state and then go to the state you just created semi counter attack and then the percentage is it gonna land each time they cast it or is it gonna be like they have a chance of getting this it's up to you what you want to do I would probably keep it a uh, hundred percent because if you're gonna spend your turn to cast this buff uh, you don't want it to keep failing and you just waste your turn so I would set that to a hundred percent you can say cast or does or whatever we'll say uh, uses counter uh, semi counter and uh, then uh, you award this once you've created this the state then you've created the skill then you want to award it to one of your classes so say I wanted to award it to my Ronin class here I go to edit decide what level you want to give him that um, that skill and then you, you go down the the skill list select that skill hit OK so then at that level your state your class uh, of whatever will learn this skill that inflicts that state I hope that makes sense um, one more thing that I forgot to do is the animation you'll probably want to pick an animation for it um, we'll just go with uh, this one but uh, you can go to animations and do that. I've done a different video on animations, so I'm not going to get into that. But you'd select an animation. Also, you can decide if it's going to be a certain hit or not. I would just go certain hit 100% because it's not like you're dealing damage this turn and you don't want to keep wasting your turns, like I said. So going back to states, we'll go over a few more things. Um, when you go to the bottom here, the messages, uh, the first one is going to say if an actor is inflicted with a state. So you can have it say different things if if uh, your characters get uh, inflicted with the state or if the enemy gets inflicted with a state most of the time I keep it the same um, uh, one thing to note is this text will play will di will display directly after the name of the actor or enemy so if you if you don't want it to just be uh, it, basically you want to create a space so you want to say space bar and then uh, has gone into a state of defense or or whatever if you don't in include the space at the beginning then you'll notice that it'll say has gone into a state of defense but there'll be no space between the actor's name and uh, the name of so it'll be like uh, let me pick one of my actors here it'll say like uh, driftwood has but that's all one word driftwood has <laughs> gone into a state so you inc include the a space at the beginning um, if the state persists now uh, be careful when you uh, include this because you're going to get constantly spammed with this every turn. So usually I leave this blank. But I do include uh, the state is removed so I know when it wears off. Now I'm um, touching on another subject. I think we've gone through everything in here. Another subject is uh, a plugin. Yanfly has a ton of great scripts including uh, persistent states or auto passive states. So what you want to do is, let me bring this up here. Go to uh, yanfly.mo slash yep if you don't have a... I mean, even if you got the DLC, he's updating. He, all, he or she always updates his scripts. So you might want to just get a fresh copy of his newest version. So the first thing you're going to need is the core engine. You're going to need the core engine for pretty much all of his scripts except for the few at the bottom here. So get the core engine. And if you don't want to copy-paste into a text file, right-click and then save the link as. You can see at the bottom it... Um, let me see this one. Is that right? No, you click on it first, and then you go to where you see it .js, like right here. Uh, you'll see at the very bottom left of the screen, yanfly.mo slash plugin slash en slash yep underscore core engine .js. So whenever you have the link for a, a .js, you can right-click that, save the link as, go to your folder where the game is. Uh, if you're not sure, you can go into your your game, click on game, and then open folder, and it'll tell you the description on the top there so you know where it's at. Um, once you figure that out, you go to uh, the .js link, right-click, save link as, and then you want to put that in your JS plugins folder, and then you would save it there, 
and overwrite uh, a previous version if you're updating versions. So get the core engine first, uh, and then any other of the other ones you want to get. And then for this specific thing, you want to get auto passive states. So you would click on auto passive states, and then go to where you can find the .js. Uh, there it is, auto passive states.js. Right click that, save link as, save that in your JS plugins. And now, how you use this is you're going to, um, you can always go to the help file for most of these plugins. All of the Antlies will, will give you a description. So double click it, go to help, he'll tell you how to create it. So if you see right here, you can include these note tags on the actor, class, skills, weapons, whatever. So you just go right over here, highlight that, press Control C to copy because the right click copy hasn't been implemented yet. And then um, you're going to go to uh, your database again, and then go to the actor that you want to have that state. Like, say you have a new uh, a new class, and it's like a, a a monk or something, and he always has a chance to 50% chance to counterattack. What you can do is in his note box, you can go down here, Control V to paste it, and then he'll always have the passive state of X. So let's go to the states again, see where we put the semi counterattack state that we just created. In this case it's 40. So we'll go back to the classes and we're going to change that X to number 40. So once you've got that um, plug in the the Yanfly engine core and the auto passives and you've created the state, then you've created the skill that awards the common uh, not the common event, the add state and then you've awarded that uh, state to your um, uh, to your actually you don't have to give them the skill if you want to do an auto passive you can bypass the whole create a skill thing you can basically make this state and, and, and install the plugin and go passive state this and he'll always have that state if you don't want him to have that state at all times you would take that state off and give him a skill so he's got to spend a turn to use it but that's basically states in a nutshell um, and you can use that you also asked about another one a burning status you can use that uh, poison type of uh, HP negative HP regeneration to to do like a burning. I actually did a burning one myself, but instead of one HP, I did three percent HP. Now, how I wouldn't, uh, I'm not exactly sure how you would make it a specific one HP a turn, but you can do a a specific one uh, percent of their maximum health a turn by just creating a ex extra parameter that's under param, and then HP regeneration to a negative percent, and then every turn, and you can specify everything. The priority on this uh, HP regeneration, positive or negative, you want to do 65. So hopefully that helps you, Josiah, and anybody else who is interested in learning about states. Um, thank you guys for watching this video. Um, please like, favorite, share. Follow me on twitter.com slash driftwoodgaming if you want to be updated on little things I do. Um, subscribe to the channel if you want more content and tutorials like this. It really helps me out and it lets me know that you guys are interested in this stuff. So thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next tutorial.